I was born in New Orleans, but grew up in Guatemala, Houston, and finally Corpus Christi, Texas. I started to take art seriously when I was 10 years old. I started out copying a series of masterpieces in crayon from a series of rotating displays from the New York Museum of Art that my elementary school had set up. They put one of the beautiful reproductions at the front of the classroom and then give a short lecture. It would stay for a week and then rotate out for another piece. I think my work was pretty good, but none survived. From then, there was no stopping me. I continued to draw and paint more and more. After serving three years as a Navy photographer, I visited British Columbia with a friend and fell in love with it and chose to settle there. I did my BFA and MFA in Canada at the University of Victoria in British Columbia and Concordia University in Montreal. My BFA program was in the middle of the 80s. At that time, there was an increasing demand by students for more academic tools, like drawing especially. Most of our professors were from the late modernist era, lots of masking tape on canvas. Their skills and interests were not in figurative work. This increasing interest in the figure was going on all over America, Canada, everywhere. The buzz was postmodernism, new painting, bad painting, neo-expressionism, and other labels I can't remember. I worked fairly large, not to just be grand, but because how I work often requires it. I need to be able to move freely on the surface to build up the planes, to break them down and rebuild them again. The process is ridiculously long and challenging. I can make a pretty good classical figurative painting in a fraction of the time. But my goal, besides a rich surface, is to hold the viewer. I want you to say, wait, there's something else here, and then hopefully stay with the piece a little bit longer. I've always loved drawing, and the figurative images are equally important to me, as is the painting process. And it's the interaction between that process and the figurative imagery that my work, at its best, I hope, is about. I put a lot of time into my large compositions, a lot of time. I want the composition to be strong when just inches across. Then I know it'll be strong when 10 feet across, and not just because it's big. I want it to have some impact in its photo documentation as well as on the wall. I don't believe that I can say anything really. Besides, it's not my goal. I try to engage more than say. I don't want to be didactic. I don't want to create political message posters. My work, hopefully, contains something of how I'm thinking and feeling about my world, but. I have no illusions that I'm getting some message across. Every viewer will interpret a piece from their vantage point. And that's a good thing. It allows the viewer to be a part of the creative process and to think and reflect on their own. I don't want to titillate or shock. I mean, these are great ways to get noticed, but I feel they limit a piece tremendously. Disturbing is good, though. For me, disturbing is challenging and engaging, and it encourages the viewer to think and go deeper into the piece. I love 40s and 50s film noir. I set out to shape a proto-story, or at least the characters in the scene, but ultimately it's the viewer who gives it life and meaning. They write the story. I love working with charcoal. It's incredibly adaptable to a large range of techniques. Recently, I've been toning down the amount of line in my larger pieces. I've started working with spray paint, which has allowed for softer, quieter areas that play well with the line work. I'm still trying to understand where color fits into my work. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about me and my work. You can contact me anytime to arrange an actual visit. I'd love to meet you and show you my work. I can be found at clintatkinsonart.com and you can follow me on Instagram at clintatkinsonart.